Hello and welcome back to training vlog number three. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about lower back pain as this is something that I have experienced a lot over the last couple of years and I'm sure a lot of you watching this have experienced at some point in your life too. Also have a look out, there is a clip in here where I dump the bench press on myself and have to shuffle out that is quite amusing. So watch out for that one. So lower back pain, uh, this can sometimes be referred to as non-specific lower back pain and all that simply means is it's a type of pain where we cannot identify a pathology or distinct cause for the pain. Um, so it will be referred to as a bubble of non-specific, which is not a negative term. It just means we don't specifically know what's causing the pain. So around 84% of people will experience back pain at some point in their life and around 20% of us will get it every single year. I know for myself, I've had it for the last couple of years and it tends to come back once a year, which is not abnormal. It seems to be more abnormal to go through life and not actually experience any back pain. So interesting statistic. Most kinds of non-specific lower back pain actually do tend to resolve themselves in two to six weeks, which is very promising and very reassuring if this is something you've experienced in the past. We don't really know why they tend to resolve themselves. It seems to be a case of regression to the mean, which is a good one to go and Google if you've not heard it before, which basically means the natural course of history with this quote unquote injury is for things to return to the way that they were before, just because we are adaptable human beings and we tend to adapt to the tasks that are thrown at us. 99% of cases that are non-specific lower back pain are not serious. Um, the serious ones tend to arise from things like where there's been significant trauma, such as falling off a ladder or being in a car accident, for example. So it's unlikely that if you're having a little bit of lower back pain, that it's a fracture or anything like that, unless you've been in a traumatic experience. We don't actually know what causes a lot of these cases of lower back pain, um, which may seem a little bit disappointing. For example, if you go to the GP because you're experiencing some pain and they don't really have an answer for you, even after doing imaging, for example, because I think a lot of us are looking for a diagnosis or we're looking for some kind of justification as to why we have pain. And when there isn't any justification, sometimes it can feel like maybe we're not being heard or maybe the healthcare provider thinks that we're just making it up and it's all in our head, which is not the case at all. We know that pain can present itself without tissue damage and sometimes there can be tissue damage without pain. So just to reiterate that point, pain and damage are different things. They don't always come together. Sometimes we can have pain without having tissue damage. Sometimes we can have tissue damage without having pain. So pain itself tends to be an output of the brain. Pain is not an output of the tissues and it doesn't come from the tissues. Sometimes there can be something in the tissue or a damage or a response or some nociception that's going on, a bit of sensitivity that can lead to a pain output from the brain, but the pain output is not coming directly from the tissue. And we know that in particular things like bed rest and not moving, ceasing activity actually make pain outcomes worse long term and they really, really decrease individual's quality of life. So it's something that I really do advise against if I'm training someone that's having a little bit of lower back pain and they're a bit fearful about returning to exercise. We know that moving itself and continuing to be active, continuing to exercise doesn't actually cause more damage. So if you're concerned perhaps that if you continuing exercising would make things worse, we know that that's usually not the case and continuing exercise tends to be a lot more positive than negative. It will really help you to keep doing the things that you enjoy, maybe with just a few modifications. Um, it will keep your tissues moving and keep that healing process going on if there is some kind of tissue damage there that maybe needs a little bit of time to return back to normal. We know that things like worrying about the pain, fearfulness around certain movements or hypervigilance around certain movements, all of these things can really amplify the pain experience that we are having. They can make the pain last for longer. They, they can make us feel pain during exercises that we wouldn't normally feel pain in. They can make us feel more intense pain in exercises that we do normally feel pain in. All of these things, which are really, really not helpful when we're trying to move past a point of pain in our training or in our life. In terms of training, there are different ways you can go about this as we've got a lot of variables that we can manipulate here. We've got training volume, training intensity, training frequency. We've got exercise selection, exercise variation, things like that. So there's a lot that could be modified here to work around a pain situation um, to allow time for the situation to calm down so that we're not experiencing as much pain and sensitivity then when we maybe go back to doing what we were doing before. So in my case, what I did with my training was I had to dial back my training volume 
and I had to dial the intensity down a little bit. And so for some of the exercises where I was experiencing pain through the full range of motion, I would cut the range of motion a little bit so that I could do the section without pain that I could do. And then the section that had pain, I would remove so that I was just using that smaller range of motion. Um, and the main goal of the training during that time was for me to work out what uh, level of intensity I could tolerate or where the quote threshold was for my pain and then trying to work just underneath that threshold to get myself feeling more okay with those movements with a little bit of pain until the pain subsided enough for me to add a bit more weight or add a bit more volume over time. Um, in doing this I did have some pain, in, some pain during the training process but it's worth noting that that is very normal and that's not necessarily bad or indicative that things are going in the wrong direction or there's more damage occurring or anything like that. It's more of a case of there will be some pain and there will be some times where things regress backwards and it feels like things maybe are getting worse, um, but then things may calm down again. And it's more of a case of consistency with the training and trusting in the process to work long term, having a lot of faith in the process or the practitioner that you're working with. When it comes to working around pain, we have to work out where our threshold is for tolerance and then working out how we can train just underneath that threshold. So we're still gonna be in a little bit of pain and it's not gonna be completely pain-free. I think that is a misconception that it should be pain-free if we're doing rehab work, which is not the case at all. There will still be some pain and it's likely that there will be pain that crops up every now and then a little bit worse than normal, but that's not necessarily a bad thing and it's gonna be part of the process of working through uh, something like a lower back pain that's been sticking around for a while. But if you are experiencing pain, it would be worth talking to your G GP and seeing if you can get a referral to go and see a physiotherapist about this. Let me know down in the comments below if it is something you've experienced before and how you dealt with it when it cropped up. I'll see you in the next one.